soy el fuego que... Hi everybody, welcome back to your Real Tour Sensei show. Broadcasting today from one of the few remaining grand hotels in the one month, White Mountains, New Hampshire, built in 1979, the Eagle Mountain House and Golf Club. I am Sandra Hauregui Schwapitz, for the ones that don't know me, and today our guest is Michelle Vega. Welcome, Michelle, to the show. Thank you very much to be here with us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to get to chat with you today. Thank you. And a little bit about Michelle. Michelle is a wife, a mom of two amazing girls and have a very loving husband. Being raised by a single mom of four, she learned early on the power of hard work and resilience. Michelle started her real estate career 17 years ago, and I will let Michelle to tell us more about your story. <laughs> Of course. Well, listen, first of all, thank you so much, Sandra, for having me on your show. You are just incredible. I love everything that you're doing uh, in your area and uh, just the powerhouse that you are for our industry. So it's it's a true honor for me to be able to uh, come on your show and connect and just chat with you. And um Yeah, for everyone uh, that is just tuning in, my name is Michelle Vega. Um, I uh, have an amazing family that I'm so grateful for. I've been in the business. I started about 17 years ago. Um, and fun fact, I actually started in the mortgage industry um, and later transitioned into real estate sales and you know, went from the bottom up with the mortgage industry. I started as an independent mortgage broker that led me into an opportunity with wholesale lending, which was incredible. I learned so much. I um, kind of put two and two together and got to connect with some of the most amazing people in the Central Florida market at that time through wholesale lending because part of my job was de developing territories. So I am in the Central Florida area. I had all of Orlando, Winter Park, um, some of the uh, celebration area, um, and it was just great. Got a chance to learn how to pre-qualify loan uh, loan programs, how to underwrite loan programs, kind of how to you know work with some of those investors and. Through that, I was able to then spin that off and open up my own uh, compliance, uh, mortgage compliance company, servicing all those business partners. So what we did was that, you know, all of their um, loans that came in, we did the processing for them. Kind of if I could put it into words, almost kind of what a transaction coordinator so, sort of does for us in the real estate side. But we would do that for them in the lending side, making sure that the loan applications were right, the documents were right to submit, that uh, because we had a little bit more of an underwriter eye, um, give them the opportunity to do that compliance for them and kind of did that for a while. And then, you know, for I hate to age myself, but for those that lived through that subprime market crash back in 2007, um, you know, everything changed so radically back then. Um, and, you know, I, I basically was out of business really quick. It was a very uh, challenging time for everyone that was in the real estate industry back then. I mean, I remember, you know, towards the when everything started hitting, um, we would have closings and the lenders will call and say, our, our lines are frozen. We, we can't fund these loans. And, and, you know, things weren't going through. And um, ultimately, we ended up losing it all. Um, we, we had our own, we had two offices. Um, all of our partnerships, nobody was doing business back then. And um, so that, you know, put us in a place where we had to shift, we had to transition. And that's how I ended up transitioning from the lending side to the real estate side um, and working foreclosures and short sales. I don't know if, if any of you guys are watching, you know, remember that time, but that's kind of like what our industry ended up being. It was, it was a real you know, 
train wreck back then, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So I transitioned into working short sales and foreclosures and um, had the opportunity to work with some incredible partners that helped, you know, um, me work through negotiating those things and, and working with the lenders that were foreclosing. And, um, you know, that kind of gave birth to the real estate side for me. And, you know, of course, the market got stronger, things got tightened up. You know, I don't know if you were working back then, Sandra, but lending was crazy back then. I mean, if, if you had a pulse, you got a loan. <laughs> so it, when things changed, you know, the, the market got healthier, um, but it was definitely different. And, you know, we transitioned eventually from short sales to FHA, strong guidelines and vitality back into the market. And people that were buying homes actually qualified for the homes. <laughs> like yeah. on paper <laughs> so <laughs> yeah right so it was it was kind of like that you know right up to the healthy market to what we are now and that was kind of a little bit on you know how i got started into the business and you know kind of just have work with the changes of the market and it's great that you were able to to pivot and to think about the new what i do now i'm caught up with these, which it was a moment that you couldn't go and do any more lending, mm -hmm. but you, you, you thought about, well, let me think about what can I do now to continue living and continue um, creating a new business for your family and, and, and uh, be provide, uh, keeping providing. And it's great that the idea of the short sales, the foreclosures, because at that time, that was the only thing available. That was mm -hmm. the only, and a short sale, my for, first short sale took eight months to get approved. Yes. I don't know how it yes. was, but oh, it, it was, was, it was rough. Um, but yeah, you know, I have, uh, you know, I'm so grateful for all of the uh, professional mentors that I've had along the way. And I remember I had a friend of mine, you know, and, and she, you know, early on will always say, you know, the, the best success stories in business come out of a time of crisis. Like, you know, the best companies are, are birthed out of crisis, you know, out of a meeting that need, you know, you kind of, they just rise to that occasion. And, you know, when you begin to reframe, you know, uh, times of crisis and times of challenge, then that's kind of like when that leader arises, right? And then of course, you know, there's training and there's resources and you kind of have to just position yourself to learn something new. But, you know, I'll tell you what, you know, Sandra and everyone that's listening, we are in the best industry, in my opinion. Yes, it, it has come with a lot of uh, changes, like any industry, because let's be real, you know, every industry suffers their growth pains and their changes and challenges. But, um, Everybody needs a place to live. Yes. <laughs> At the end of the day, everyone needs a place to live. So us as professionals, we have the opportunity in this industry to be a part of that. And we get to change with it, right? You know, because when that time everybody was losing their homes, they still needed professionals to help them guide them through that. And I remember, you know, we we would help families with the uh, keys, um, uh, cash to keys program where, you know, hey, you know, you're going through this, this, you know, very challenging situation. Let me help you guide you into a place of a healthier um, fresh start, you know? And so we have that opportunity. And I think it's such a blessing um, that, you know, we get to help people in one of the most important transitions and transactions of their life, which is their home, right? So yeah, it, it's, it, it was, it was challenging, but it's still very rewarding. And it, and it was a learning curve, right? I had to learn how to, before I would get paid really quick, because you know what, it was, you know, easy money with the way that, you know, lending was. Now we had to wait for these things to turn around. We had to submit all this paperwork and, but we made it work and we wrote it out and, you know, what a blessing that we get to have a healthy market now um, oh, yeah. that we get to work in. You, you, you made it the, the most difficult time, which it was the learning process to the sales, foreclosures and everything that you had done. Well, so I cut my teeth on the, on the, on the hard stuff. <laughs> yes, you're learning the hard time. For so sure. if you were younger self, what would you change? 
Man, that question I love. I love that question because I think about that a lot. Even sometimes my husband and I will be on a date and I'm like, babe, you know, remember, you know, when this happened, what would you have told you, your younger self? Um, if we're talking professionally, um, if, if I were to talk to someone right now, let's say that they're getting started in this market, right? Um, I would say join a team join a team. I didn't when I was coming up in my professional um, career. Obviously, the structure of the business was a little bit different, right? Um, but uh, and the reason why I would say join a team is because you get to go farther, faster. You get to take advantage if you're with a good team leader that aligns to you know, you and to your goals and to your way of thinking and, and your values, um, you get to go farther faster because you get to take advantage of someone that has gone before you, that has put systems in place. You don't have to figure that out. Um, that has uh, financially is backing that team with the resources that it needs. So you don't have to figure that out on your own as well. Um, position yourself in a place to win, right? And and you can go far on your own, but you can go so much farther with the right people alongside you and, and locking arms with you. So I would say that overall arching as, as a person developing, you know, my younger Michelle, my baby Michelle, <laughs> um, I would say do it anyway do it anyway. Do not overthink things. You know, there has been things that were in my heart to do at certain points in my life, and I didn't do them right away. I waited. Um, I overthought it. And, you know, when I look back, it, sometimes just getting started, even if it's not fully polished and it's, it's you know, not how you want it to be, um, creates momentum. Things begin to align just because you took that step and you did it, right? So I would say, you know, start faster, do it anyway. Don't overthink things so much. Um, that's what I would tell my younger self for sure. <laughs> that's powerful. I think I will say the same to, to myself. So sometimes we get afraid. Sometimes the fear is really a big one. After you had gone through, I would say, failure in the back in the market, when you lost everything and you're afraid again to to become the person yeah. you were at that, that, before that. So, yeah. yes, I, I agree <laughs> with you. And on I would that. say even this, you know, um, it's so funny because, you know, Sandra, for us, when I say we lost everything, we lost everything. We lost our house. We lost our business. We had to go bankrupt. I mean, all of our income and our economy was wrapped. Both my husband and I were both in the industry. So he wasn't in another industry. I mean, this was our economy. And, um, you know, I look back and there was just so many emotions around that transition, right? Because, you know, here we are trying to navigate. It, it was similar and kind of close to like what we just went through with COVID, which, which was like an unknown, you know, unprecedented time, you know, but we still have to show up. Right. Yeah. And, you know, looking back at that, um, even though it was so hard, it created substance. You know, I would say to anybody that's watching, don't be afraid of challenge, right? In the moment is hard. In the moment when you skin your knees, you you know, you break your teeth, you fall down. I mean, nobody likes that. But when you walk that process out, it creates a substance in you that allows you to be able, number one, help someone else that might have gone through that, right? Because you have something right. to speak into. But it creates in you um, the strength to know that if I got through that, I can get through whatever might come my way, right? Like, it's almost like that meme uh, from uh, uh, that movie, um, Hangover, where he, he's saying, but did you die? <laughs> it's kind of like that, right? Like, you know, um, it was hard. You go through these hard times, but they, they make who you are and who you're meant to be. So don't be afraid of that challenge. Kind of just go through it, you know? go through that storm. And at the end of that storm, you're going to see, man, you are better for it, right? Like you got some, some resilience muscles now, right? Like, you know, my husband was sharing this story the other day 
with, you know, a group of leaders that we were coaching. And he was talking about um, how the buffalo and the cow, when a storm is coming, they both can sense it, right? The cow turns to turn around against the wind of the storm, right? And try to run away from the storm. And most of the time they get hurt. The buffalo kind of goes into the storm because the buffalo knows that even though the storm is coming, if they can cut through it, they'll get out of it on the other side faster than taking the chance of it taking it out, right? And sometimes that's how we have to look at challenge. It's like, you know what? We just have to get through it. It sucks when you're going through it. But on the other side, you become stronger for it, right? And it becomes part of your story. It becomes part of what then you can give to someone else, right? So that's what I would say, you know, to um, my younger self. Wow, that's powerful. Thank you very much to share that with us. So what did you learn through leading during difficult times? And you said kind of a little bit already, but yeah. tell us a little bit more about that. Um. I 100% believe that difficult times will cause your leader to rise up, right? The leader inside you rises up. Why? Because when the way that we look at things determines the way that we do things, right? Yes. So lead, uh, leading through a time of crisis or through a difficult time really is going to cause you to, number one, test the way you see things, your perspective, right? I feel like resilient people and people that, you know, um, I don't know, are, are, are strong in what they do or have overcome much, let's just put it that way. At one point or another, they had to challenge their perspective. They had to challenge the way that they saw things because if they didn't, the storm takes them out. If, if you don't change the way that you see things, the storm is going to take you out. And guys, in this industry, in the real estate industry, the way that we look at things has to be one of problem solving, has to be one of making sure that we can find a way. And I'm not saying it's only the, the real estate industry. I think in life, that's how you kind of have to be, right? So leading through crisis or leading through challenge really is going to cause you to either, you know, fight or flight. And, um, and it's going to challenge your perspective, right? So um, once you can then hone in on, okay, how I'm going to look at this situation, then you will be able to lead effectively through any challenge, right? The moment that you begin to even see a challenge and say, this is not happening to me, but it's happening for me, it causes you to shift and say, okay, you know what? All right, let's deal with it. Yeah. The second thing would be getting the facts. I feel like sometimes we get a, a challenge will come, a crisis will come, a difficult time will come, and we might not know all the facts around it. And then it causes us either to shut down, to implode, to react instead of being proactive, right? So kind of getting the facts around what's going on. Sometimes that might even include embracing the worst case scenario. Why? Because if you embrace the worst case scenario, meaning you begin to consider it, then it allows you to look past it. It allows you to say, okay, if what I fear the most ends up happening, like in my case, if I end up losing it all, what am I going to do? Versus letting the fear of, oh my gosh, I can't control this outcome and what's going to happen now. Okay. What if it happens? Then what am I going to do? And then you begin to, to respond a little bit different, right? Um, yeah. And then when you're in a leadership position, remember, when you're a leader, it's not about you anymore. It's yes. about the other people. And everything you do, it doesn't just impact you. It begins to impact others. And guys, uh, this is just you know um, a, a, a fact of life. You don't have to be a team leader or a broker owner to be a leader. You are a leader no matter what. You're leading yourself. You might be leading your children. You might be leading a family. You might be leading your your siblings. Um, for a long time, I was the older of my siblings. Um, and, you know, what you do is going to have an impact in everyone around you, right? So um, when you are faced with difficult times in leadership, it's all about perspective. Manage that. And your outcome will be completely different because 
as we see things is how we do things, right? You know, even if you were to take this into the spiritual side, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, you know, as a man thinketh, so is he, right? You know, and and so we're seeing it, we're thinking it, we're becoming it. So we have to manage our perspective, perspective above all things, because that's how we're going to respond to what, you know, happens in a time of crisis or, or challenge when you're leading. Yes, and that will help to get pass through through everything um uh, perspective it's very important. yes very important so describe what team leaders need to be in order to be to be recognized as competent coaches you said you need questions. to be a team like a team leader you don't need to be a, a coach so describe a little bit about that i love that question i think that number one you need to be able to lead yourself well. That's the beginning of everything, right? You know, I, I love the analogy of when a plane is crashing and, you know, you might be sitting with your child or with your elderly parent or someone that might need help. If you don't put that mask of oxygen in your face first, you're not going to be able to help the person next to you, right? Yeah. So leading yourself well, it's it's paramount. It's, it's the first step, right? Um, and, and what does that mean? What does it mean to lead yourself well? Well, you know, if you've taken the time to establish what your life principles are and being able to guide your life around them, right? Um, and let me tell you something, leading yourself well doesn't mean that you always have everything put together. It's knowing how to show up when things are falling apart. That's also leading yourself well, right? So wow. leading yourself well is making sure that you show up to do what you said you were going to do, not just for others, but for yourself, right? So if if you said that, for example, um, uh, uh, I don't know, mental health is important to you, right? A healthy body is important to you. Um, whatever those those guiding principles are important to you, then making sure you you show up for yourself to support that, right? If getting enough sleep, hello, where are all my workaholics at? I got the two hands up, right? You know, hey, listen, you know, we are so guilty of wanting to, you know, be top performers and high performers. And I'm all about that. Trust me, I'm the same way. But I know that um, in order for me to get there, I need to take care of this, right? So right. leading yourself well. You know, if, if there's things that you need mastery in, showing up to get that training, showing up to get your own mentoring and your own coaching and growing, you know what I mean? Getting in your personal development, all that stuff, leading yourself well. I think that's number one. Then number two is putting people first. You know, once you're leading yourself well, putting people first. When you're a leader, when you take that mantle of leadership, which again, is not this mystical thing. We are all leaders in one way or another, right? So when we show up to our greatest self, our best self as a leader, we need to understand that, okay, now it's not just about me, right? Before when it was just about me, whatever I did only impacted me, but as a leader, it's impacting other people. So I have to think of putting those people first, right? And then taking it a step further, I feel like servant leaders, leaders that understand service, right? And putting people first. So how am I going to serve this group, love this group, coach this group, lead this group to come up higher, right? Um, and so I would say that would be the second thing is understanding everything I do has to be with them in mind, right? And then it's when it gets beautiful because then you create that culture of you're giving value to them. Their growth brings value to you, right? So it's not even about what they say, do, or any of that. It's as you begin to see the fruit of that and you see your people grow, that brings value to you, right? Correct. And um, and then that's how, you know, it, it gets duplicatable. So lead yourself well, put people first, for sure. And I would say if I were to add a third one, I would say always continue growing, right? Growing, not just yourself, growing your circle, growing your community, growing the territory, growing, like, you know, always put yourself in a position to reach as many 
people as possible with value and whatever that may look like for you. And, um, and then those three things will make you unstoppable. Yes. Wow. Thank you very much, Michelle, for all the value that you give in today. And um, let's say the last one, what would you say to a new agent when they come in the industry, they are scared. They don't know what to do. And I know you mentioned getting to a team, but some people don't even know where to start. So what would you be your advice for them? You know, for someone that's coming in into the industry as a new agent, I'm sure that you took this decision because somewhere along the line, you had a vision, right? You had a vision to better yourself. You had a vision to maybe accomplish some things, accomplish some goals. Um, maybe you had a dream. Maybe you were in a place where things weren't working out and you just wanted change. You wanted a change of career, industry, pace, whatever it, it was. Um, I, I am such a strong believer because I have seen it in my own life that when you find someone that has walked 10 steps in the direction that you want to go, follow them, right? You, again, like I said before, you can do about so much on your own. And let me tell you, the people that make a part of our industry are powerhouses, are, you know, one of the most amazing people because we have to be resilient to be able to do this career, right? So if you already put your step in it, I know that you're amazing already. But you owe it to yourself to find people that are going to help you go farther, faster. Maybe that's not a team. Maybe that's a coach. Maybe that is an accountability partner. Oh, identify where you are and find someone that's going to be able to help you get where you want to go faster. Take advantage of someone else's wisdom. Take somebody out to coffee. Find who the top producer is in your area. Um, you know, do a little bit of research, but get around people that are givers, that are willing to sow into your life. That's even going to help you define your vision. Sometimes we come into some, some uh, you know, into a situation, an opportunity with a way of thinking, right? Like an expectation. And then you get talking to someone else and then your perspective changes and shifts. And you're like, hold up, like maybe this is not really how I expected it. But I can see this working on my, you know, for my good, or I can see this working for my benefit. So, you know, don't don't be a lone ranger. That's the best advice that I can give you. You know what I mean? If you're the type of person that you say, you know what, I don't want to be in a team for whatever reason, then find a coach, find a mentor. If you can't find a coach or a mentor, find the top producer in your area or or get into an organization, amazing organizations through our industry like NAREP um, and, you know, so many other, you know, councils like the Women Council of Real Estate. And um, even, even if it's just the... Um, Oh my gosh, I just threw a blank here. The um, uh, leaders group within your area, right? Um, find a community of people that have found success in the way you want to go. Because if you can start with the end in mind and someone is opening up the playbook and say, hey, listen, I was where you were once and I did this and this and this and it worked, but this is the, the kicker. I also did this and this and this, and it didn't. That is going to accelerate you like leaps and bounds versus you trying to white knuckle it yourself. And take it from someone that in the beginning, I <laughs> said to myself, I don't need no one. I got this, guys. I, and I had success. But it wasn't until I partnered up with the right people that I was able to accelerate my success so don't go at it alone find community wow great those are great tips michelle thank you very much for the value that you bring today to the show remember everyone this show is live every friday 1 p.m you have to come don't miss it we bring valuable tips for you um, thank you, Michelle, and um, enjoy your weekend. Thank, thank you very much. It was great to have you today. Thank you so much, Sandra. I love being here. I wish you nothing for but success. You're doing amazing. Thank you very much.